got in it.
you must look after you, mustn't you? What did you say? Now that you're one of us. Good day, Jim. that you're going to have my little brother. Can I come and see him? Madeline, what are you doing? I told you not to tell anybody. What have I told you about talking to strangers? Do I have to? Too many drugs, and you just picked up a fucking idiot. It happens. I'm so stupid. Quit blaming yourself. You did nothing wrong. I should have listened to you. We should have listened to each other. I'll drink to that. Cool. Look, I really don't want to go home tonight. That's cool. You can crush you if you want. Can you get with some sleep? Mm. Where are you going? Are you taking the pills? <laughs> no. These are sleeping pills. You're gonna sleep like a baby and wake you up fine.
wake up. Wake up. What? Touch me. Touch me. Technicolor, that's all I fucking need. It's a fucking disgrace we are getting nowhere. A word. My office. You don't need to say it, sir. Four murders in one week and no solid leads is a piss poor showing, I know. But that new computer system's a load of old wank. With all due respect. For every piece of crap we type in, we get a load more bollocks back. That's not what I wanted to talk about, Pete. I've had a worrying call from Joan, the photographer. Something about you touching the dead bodies. Yes, sir. Just something I have to do. OK. Any particular reason? To make sure they really are dead. How long has this been going on, Pete? About seven years. Ever since the girl. Abigail Watson. Abigail Watson? Wasn't she one of Kemper's? His fourth victim. She was only ten years old. That bastard raped and abused her repeatedly for two days. I remember, Pete. You were the first to find her. He'd broken her pelvic bone with his fist. Severe trauma led to a state of advanced catalepsy. Her body function shut down. No sign of life. I know what happened. It was all a terrible mistake. I was with her for longest. If I touched her, I would have known. She woke up 
in a fridge. Yes, but I mean, no one could have. She woke up in a fridge in the morgue. They think she was awake for at least 10 hours before she froze to death. No one heard her screams. When they eventually pulled her out, they found she'd broken every bone in her hands from pounding endlessly against the metal walls. No one should have to suffer like that. Except maybe bastards like Kemper. I'll get directions. You go in and use the toilet. Except you don't use the toilet. And nick the money. Right. The money is where you say it is, right? Yeah, my sister told me. It gives her a tip from it when she does his meals on wheels. Looks like no one's in. Let's do it then.
it. For your face. You won't have a fucking face if you do that again. Oh, Josh, the neighbours might hear. <laughs> Fuck you, when the creamy flu in on. Come on. Jesus, what a fucking stain. It could be anywhere. We could be here all night. Get busy then. This clothes fucking sting. Oh, room fucking stings. Oh, my God, Emma. Look what I found. What is it? <laughs> You're sick. <laughs> Let's just find the money and get the fuck out of here, okay? You check under the bed. a few grand here. This is a lot of money. No, it's a fuck <laughs> of a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
clothes. Well, we'll have to get some of his. We've got trash everything we were wearing. No evidence. What's going to happen, Soph? Nothing that we don't want to. What if someone finds out? No one's going to find out. But what if people start asking questions? Who the fuck's going to ask anything about anything? Police, I don't know, someone. You haven't told anyone, have you? No. You sure? My sister knows. You told your sister. She pretty much guessed anyway when I started asking all those questions. She'll be alright though, Sophie. I'll tell her, I'll explain. He attacked us. It wasn't our fault. So did you tell her I was in on it? No, of course not. Some okay clothes over there. Look, Sophie, my sister ain't a grass if that's what you're worried about. Shut up and just get dressed. I'm gonna need a belt. These are massive. <laughs> What's your problem, missus?
ID on all four bodies. Wonderful. Corbin. Where have I heard that before? Judge Corbin. Who's that? The judge in the Kemper trial. You think they're related? Stone. Chief prosecutor in the Kemper trial was called Stone. Philip Stone. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sit down, Pete. We got the lab report. You're not gonna like it. The fingerprint on the medallion is Kemper's. You're having a fucking laugh, aren't you, sir? I wish I was, Pete. But the lab's 100% sure. It's Kemper's. Bollocks. I've spoken to Dr. Ross at the hospital. Dr. Ross is a stupid cunt, sir. Don't listen to her. All right, Pete. I won't listen to her. I'll listen to you. Now tell me about Kemper. They say he can control people's minds. Bollocks. They say that to keep him in their hospital. A mad serial killer's good for funding. But Kemper is not mad. Kemper was a professional hypnotist, a travelling stage act, a clever bastard. Get that light on. Remember, don't look in his eyes. He chose his young victims from among his audiences, hypnotising them on stage in front of unsuspecting parents. The kids had perform their funny turns, then go back to their seats, unaware of the hidden phrases that Kemper had subliminally planted in their minds. All he had to do was telephone the child, say the trigger word, and the child would come to him. Kemper's reign of abduction and terror lasted over 25 years. For every rape and murder he was eventually charged with, there must be countless more. He used the children in sick, depraved rituals. All sorts of knock-up bollocks. Trying to emulate his father, infamous 30s Satanist Anthony Crawley. But whereas his father's dabblings in the occult brought him fame, fortune and success, Kemper's activities got him nothing. Not the power he craved. Just an ever-increasing pile of bodies. Kemper turned to cannibalism to get rid of the evidence. Search every inch of this stinking cell. But his appetite for murder overtook his appetite for human flesh. And a neighbour reported the foul smell of uneaten remains. Let me talk to Kemper, sir. I'll get you some fucking answers.
not a scratch. <laughs> I didn't say it wasn't possible, Nick. Just unfeasible. What is it you want, Doc? A hundred grand? Two? Yes, I would need a lot of money, but... You tell me. Where do I get a leg from? Maybe you know a shop where they sell them, but I'm afraid I do not. But if you had a leg, it would be possible, right? Well, if you got a leg... It would be possible. Thomas! It's Nick. Yeah, yeah, that Nick. I know, a year. Two years. My, how time flies. No, no, no. Yeah, that's okay. Listen, you still live alone? Yeah. No reason. No. Just that it's something you might be able to help me out with. Mm. Yeah? You're not busy, are you? Okay. Because I'll pop around tomorrow. Okay. All right. See you tomorrow. Which is your favourite? The one I lost in the accident. How's tricks? What do you want, Nick? That's no way to greet an old mate now, is it? Look, I, I don't hang out with the old crowd anymore. That's good. Because I've got a little job that I don't want the old crowd to know about. You know what I mean? 
It's a nice little earner. Come on. You alone then, Thomas? Yeah. So what's this job then? So impatient. Don't I get a cup of tea? No. What's this job? What is it, a robbery? Of sorts. Yeah? So where do I come in then? You've got something that I want. Yeah? Like what? You're standing on it. Not the fucking rug, Thomas. Your leg. What do you mean, my leg? Exactly what I said. No, Nick. Nick, don't fuck about, mate. I want your fucking leg. Nick, no. <laughs> Good evening, Nick. Do you have an appointment? No. Better than that.
Natalie! Nat! Nat, no! Nat, no! Wait, madam. Why, thank you, sir.
NC receiving 6055. Follow you, I'll get I'm a uh, Personal injury, Chester Road. Young female. Ambulance required. I'm gonna go come down here. Excuse me, sir, do you... Receiving 6055. Hands are receiving 6055. Personal injury at Chester Road. Engine assistance required. Move along, sir. There's nothing to say. Over there, lift the toilet. I don't deserve this. Inspector Nielsen. Nielsen here. Hey, listen. I've just heard from Rant. They found a list in Campus Cell. It confirms it. You were right. Yeah, I know. We just pulled Nick Holland's body out of his Porsche. The son of Joseph Holland, the foreman of the jury on campus trial. He's on the list. Who else is on the list? There's just one more name, Pete. Yours. Mine? My God. My son. Richard, I... I've got to warn him. We phoned his house, Pete. The line's dead. When was the last time you spoke to him? What do you mean, the line's dead? I'm going to put out an APB. When was the last time you spoke to him? Two... Two and a half weeks ago, he was... He was at work. Michelle Pfeiffer. Wishful thinking. So, are we still on for tonight? We certainly are. Uh-oh, trouble. Well, Richard, busy as usual. Richard was just giving me some advice, Mr Pringle. Oh, I'm sure he was, Penny. This is your third and final warning. We've been monitoring your work. I'm compiling a report. We know you've been accessing some rather disturbing material. <laughs> yes, it's all in the report. And yet you've not informed our operators of the dangers. Yes, yes, Mr Pringle, I appreciate your concern. I appreciate this, Richard. Seven days, one week. 
your report, my desk, on it, final warning, understand? Stupid fucking Geordie Twatas cunt. Oh my god! Sorry, Ben, you shouldn't have seen that. You spend all day watching that stuff? Well, that's just a job, you know, you get used to it. I don't let it affect me. Glad to hear it. That was horrible. So, where are you taking me tonight? Richard? Richard? Sorry, Ben, I was, uh, I was miles away. So where are we going, then? Well, I thought maybe, um, an Indian, then, uh, back to mine for some coffee. Coffee at mine. Sounds divine. Ciao. Tell me about the terrible sights you've seen. I don't know about all that. I've got an incredibly morbid imagination. Have you now? You kept that quiet, you dark little maiden. <laughs> so? What? Are you going to tell me, or am I going to have to read the report? Hmm. Well, I could tell you, or I could do better than that. I could show you. Hmm.
Well, the last thing she said was that she was going to a restaurant with him. But that was three days ago. worried about you. <gasps> oh my God, Penny, what happened? What's he been saying about me? Nothing. Nobody's been saying anything about you. Look, Penny, let me in. Tell them I'm never going back. Ever. Please don't do this to me. Richard, a word. Mary from Abbott hasn't came to see me this morning. Uh huh. She saw Penny Marshall last night. She said the girl's in an awful state and refusing to come back to work. And? What the hell's that got to do with me? I don't know. You tell me. Richard. Yeah, I can hear you, Pringle. What is it? This extra screen. 
not really conducive with our company's policy of an open working environment. This company policy is a load of arse. Richard, I strongly advise you move this partition or I'll be forced to take extreme measures. Fuck your extreme measures, fuck your company and fuck you. Fired. Get your things together and go. You'll be paid till the end of the month. Reasons for your dismissal will be available on written request. Written request. Shove it up your ass! Don't be ridiculous, Richard. You know.
Come on, mate. Your time's up. I should have been out of here ten minutes ago. Five sugars. Sick room. 
Oh, you mean that internet thing? You know about it. Can't say I do. But I know they've got a big area on my roof outside. There's loads of cables. There's fucking boxes, you name it, all in the spare room at the back. But they said it was a prime location, they did. Who are they? Can't say it now. Some foreigners. Don't have any good money. But they were as happy as Larry they was, because they said this was the best spot to be in for all the equipment. This equipment, where is it? I want to see it. You work for the government? <laughs> what do you think? The state of the government, nothing would surprise me. Why don't you show me, little man? Follow me. Straight through this door here, right to the far end, straight through that door down there. There's a door at the back, and in there there's a light switch. Go straight in there, and you'll find it. We're about straight on. Yes, straight down. You'll be all right, careful. Straight through there. You'll find the light switch down there. And watch your head. I'm having a cup of tea. Would you like one? Where'd you say the light was? They've identified a body found in Bromley yesterday. Your son is dead. <laughs> what the hell is he doing here? His cell's a little bit untidy at the moment. There's nowhere else to put him.
what I should have done years ago when I had the chance. I'm going to kill him. I can't let you do that, Pete. I know. I won't ask. And until the patient's returned to his room, I cannot authorise any interviews whatsoever. I don't think you understand, Dr. Ross. Your patient is involved in a murder inquiry. I'm aware of that, Inspector, but rules are rules. You'll have to wait until Kemp has returned to his room. You're just buying time, aren't you? Roper's spoken to you, hasn't he? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't like being messed about. I'm not messing... Shooting you means nothing to me. Understand? I think so. Yes. Yes. Keep your arms by your side. Walk slowly and take me to him. Now! Inspector Nielsen. He's here to interview Kemper. Open the door. If you're sure, Dr. Ross. I'm sure. Take that madman out. 
It's over. 